Welcome to the Archives of Legend and Lore. Every week, I, the Chaotic GM, will bring a monster, humanoid, aberration, or some other being to the gaming table, and put it in the spotlight, so to say. We'll discuss some of the lore and differences in additions, and possible ways to use them in your one-shot or campaign. This time, we are jumping into a helmed horror. Well, not literally, unless you have one. In 2nd edition, a helmed horror is said to be an empty, animated armor capable of independent reasoning. It is neither undead nor a summoned creature. It is often found as a protector or guardian and appears to be a warrior completely clad in plate mail. They don't eat, sleep, and cannot feel pain. Why, well, I think that's kind of like what my ex-wife was like. Their loyalty is total and are devoid of emotion or ambition. Well, okay. Not the loyalty part, but the other part is still true. They can communicate with someone that has telepathy, but doesn't go for much more than being given orders or reporting what it sees. Fifth edition, the construct is intelligent with the ability to reason and adjust its tactics with a complete loyalty to its creator. It looks like a full plate suit of armor that is animated. A helm tour does not need food, sleep, air, or hugs. Unless you're its creator. A hug or a pat on the back really brightens its day. It can see for 60 foot, but it's blind beyond that. So in other words, if you see one, stay 61 feet away from it. In Pathfinder, it's called Phantom Armor or Hollow Helm, and appears to be a full suit of armor. Sometimes it will let the victim try to wear it before it attacks him. Stop paying yourself! Stop paying yourself! Stop... Oh, oh, you get it. It is slow and methodical and can freeze taking a 20 on stealth to appear to be normal decorative armor. Okay, before we get into combat, our sponsor this week is Grog's Grill. When your stomach is empty and you have only a few copper, come on in and Grog will make you a popper. His ale tastes like piss and his food will make your stomach turn, but he is the cheapest in town and you can't taste through the burn. Grog's Grill, remember, Thursday is rat night. Wow. I have to get some better sponsors. Alright, on with the show. Combat. Second edition leaves it to being allowed to use all weapons a fighter can use, but it also can see invisible creatures. Magic Missile actually heals the Helm Horror by restoring its bond. In fifth edition, it also fights as a skilled warrior and will take to the air to attack weaker and spellcasters first. It lacks the foresight or ability to fortify or change its environment and it won't take active measures to improve its defense position. In Pathfinder, a Hollow Helm can hold itself so still it appears to be a normal suit of armor. It can also use Freeze and can take 20 on its stealth check to hide in plain sight, disguised as normal armor. Another attack it can use is Skull Cage, in which it sometimes pretends to be normal armor, letting a creature try to wear it before revealing its deadly nature. If the Hollow Helm makes a successful combat maneuver to grapple an opponent of medium size or smaller, that creature is also blinded. Creatures that purposely try to wear a Hollow Helm are automatically grappled. This blindness lasts until the Hollow Helm's grapple is broken. It cannot attack a creature it is grappling. If a Hollow Helm is damaged while it's grappling, the creature it's grappling takes an equal amount of damage. Wow. This one's kind of short, so hopefully I can ramp up my creative side here chaos up to level 8. In the first scenario, a castle long left abandoned is said to be cursed so none go there. The party has heard of this and dreams of loot and knowledge to draw them in. Or perhaps the local priest is a relative of the last known resident. He begs you to help cleanse it so that he may reside there and bring honor to his name and faith to the land. Well, guess what? He's evil, and he wants the power from his great-grandfather that was a pure and faith-filled man. The castle is full of ornate armor that is covered with spiderwebs and dust. But, if the adventurers go in, they'll come to life and attack. I'll let you fill out the rest. Let the chaos juices flow. In the second scenario, the party comes to the aid of a fallen king. His lands have been overrun and corrupted by an ancient evil. You can fill in the specifics, you know, what the evil is, or however you want to play that. But deep in the keep is a secret door that holds a whole army of brilliant helmed horrors 
and a helm that once worn could control the army through telepathy. Plot twist. Okay, I lied. There is no plot twist here. That's all the scenario. The third and final scenario. The party meets a warrior clad in ancient armor. He tells the adventurers he lost his memories and can't remember anything except that he was used by an evil wizard to protect his tower. The party can help him attack the tower and get answers. Once they get to the tower, they find more ancient armor, none like this, but it attacks them along the way. All of those are helmed horrors. Once they get to the wizard, you can play it two ways. One, he is truly evil and you have to kill him, but has no resolve for the helmed horror you were helping that has somehow become sentient. The other is that he is a goodish wizard and is completely taken back that you found and brought him his wayward guardian. Having no clue as to how it became sentient, he offers to help the armor get answers. Maybe the spell went wrong and trapped a true soul in the armor. Perhaps the soul once fought in the armor he used. You can decide and make it an suitable for you and your group. Oh, are you still there? I know the ride in chaos was a little shorter this time. Please join me next time where we will delve into the Dusty Tomes legend and lore to bring you new ideas to your game. If you did enjoy this, please like and subscribe so you'll see my newest videos and podcasts. Thanks. And remember, if you are truly chaotic, your players will never know what you'll throw at them next.